Okay, beautiful people, it's Trina here, your scent gourmand, and I'm back with a review of a wee Zara trio from the Chapters Collection. I went overboard with Zara at the end of 2023 with all the sales that were going on. So you're gonna see a few videos in the near future about some Zara frags. Now little did I know when I purchased them that it'd be discontinuing so many of them so quickly. Mais c'est la vie d'aujourd'hui, hein? Fortunately, you'll probably be able to find a lot of them on the secondhand market if retail is now a no-go for you where you live. But actually, this collection I have to share with you today is not exactly a handful of fragrances I can recommend. This is the Oud collection that came out, oh gosh, uh, less than half a year ago and gone already. <sighs> fast fashion, fast fragrance. Now, inexpensive and necessarily synthetic oud is rarely a good thing in my opinion, unless perhaps in small doses. Zara originally came out with four oud fragrances in the Chapters collection, but that soon whittled down to just three, and I don't think it was because one of them was so good it sold out. No, I suspect it was pulled because it was so repugnant. And I'm talking about endless oud here. And though I've not had the pleasure of sniffing it myself, I've heard it was kind of like a sweaty old man wearing an unwashed leather jacket sitting on a petrol container with a rubber lid with his hairy butt hanging out of his pants. He probably had recently farted. He's got a lit cigarette hanging out of his mouth while tending to a festering wound on his foot and he's smothering or smoothing on strong medicinal ointment and then slaps some old plastic band-aids on top. That's the type of skanky imagery that doesn't sound particularly enticing to me. And it's not even my imagery, really. It's a collage I made based on other people's reviews. The notes in it were bergamot, pink pepper, cedar, floral notes, orange blossom, amber, vetiver, patchouli, and oud. Yeah, bergamot, vetiver, patchouli, and oud, Zara level ingredients. I'll bet it was indeed polarizing, but that means there are a few people out there that absolutely adored it. That's one of, one of the wonderful thing about fragrances is that there's something out there for everyone. And you know, you're never gonna have a fragrance that is universally loved. And if it is, it's probably not exciting for some people because it's not unique enough anymore, you know? But I do have the other three. The first one I got was Bohemian Oud, which I purchased before the 30 ml size options were even a thing. Now it looks like I've been through quite a bit of this juice here, but uh, the reason why there's not much liquid present in it anymore, well actually there's still a chunk of it, but I've been using it to freshen up cheap clothing that I regret buying from ultra fast fashion label Shein. The clothing is mostly made of plastics, and it seems to melt a bit whenever I wash and dry, and it stinks to high heaven. So I just um, spray it down with this after chemical warfare in my bathroom. My mistake in buying this stuff I know, but I will use it till it falls apart. Waste not, want not, and all that. Anywho, Bohemian Oud has no trace of Oud in it to my nose. I mostly smell, yeah, very sticky, sweet smelling, marshmallows that have been unnecessarily dipped first in syrup, then in vanilla and cocoa powder, and then set on fire with uh, a cheap lighter leaking butane and tossed atop um, a piece of leather on a plastic kitchen counter to just melt. With a name like Bohemian, you would think to expect something natural and joyous with lots of florals or at least patchouli or something, but no. This smells, to me, pretty juvenile and gross. I might suggest others from Zara if you really like marshmallow though. Like for example, I have it in front of me here. This Velvet Shadow that I reviewed recently. This one is also sickly sweet, but better than the Bohemian, I feel. And also, what do we have here? Red Temptation Winter, which I've not reviewed yet. It's coming up soon. This one has some marshmallow in it, and I also feel it's better than this sucker here. But yeah, all three of them are too sweet, if I'm being honest. Now the notes in here are black pepper, immortelle, vanilla, leather, incense, which I wish I could smell more of, 
cacao and oud. If it doesn't give you a headache, you might think it cozy and snuggly. I will give it that, but no, it's not for me. It's basically cheap uh, aroma candle vibes I'm getting from this. And you know, I read people compare it to By the Fireplace by Maison Margiela, and I'm like, WTF? It's chalk and cheese, no. Now there is a rubbery sort of vibe I get in here too, and I'm not against rubber smells in perfume, but if you also like that rubbery vibe in perfumery, I would suggest that Hockey Puck fragrance from Bulgari, Bulgari Black. It's very affordable and very good. I think I reviewed it. I'll link to it up here somewhere. So of course, I thought I had the worst out of the way and went on to purchase the other two in their smaller sizes when on sale. I was wrong. Well, partially wrong. Hipster Oud is worse than Boho Oud. There's a bit of a name trend going on here, it would seem. Hipster Oud is also too sweet and too sticky icky. Am I being too finicky? No. It has a light and girly rose opening with fruity notes, including orange blossom and black currant, and evolves into a very different, like different from the opening, soft, sweet fragrance with a lot of warmth. The notes are orange blossom, black currant, lily of the valley, red rose, pink pepper, saffron, which I love, amber, musk, and of course the oud. But I don't get a lot of the oud again in this one. It sounds like a great combination, but honestly, it's too scratchy and cloying and does nothing for me. I think Zara's trying to balance out that oud stuff with a lot of sugar. Cheap vanilla birthday cake with those edible silver metallic balls, you know what I'm talking about? Got lots of those sprinkled on the top, so there is a metallic vibe here. Again, not really what I would call oud, nor is there anything hipster about it. I'd add coffee notes for that. Pass. Finally, we have a uh, Perpetual Oud, a synonym for Endless, by the way. A little title desperation there, Zara. This is the least cloying of them all, and, or of the three at least, I can say with certainty. Perpetual Oud is noted for its spicy opening with black pepper, sweet deep red rose, patchouli, mm, a vetiver, saffron, and a smoky powdery vibe in the dry down. Recommended for those who like a dark but sweet rose oud combination. Now I'm a fan of the traditional rose oud combo, unoriginal as it might be. This one is not as sticky sweet as the others, so that's probably why I like it best. Dislike at least is probably more accurate. I guess this is like Zara's Rose Gourmand, which I love, but the oud, which I think has ruined it. It's like I'm a beautiful, intelligent young woman who got in with the wrong crowd and started taking meth. Anyway, Perpetual Oud is bold and daring. It is harsh. It's, I wouldn't say it's medicinal, but it's harsh. It's a sharp woody and um, oudy rose. I've hinted at the notes, but once more, they are oud, vetiver, patchouli, amber, pepper, and saffron. This one, like the others, but more so, is not ideal for the officer gym due to its potentially offensive nature. It's also got a metallic opening, but I think that disappears by the time the dry down hits. Now, people have likened this to oud fragrances from Maison Francis Kier de Jean, but I'm sorry, that's a, that's a different ballpark. But I will say that if you really like rosy ouds, which tend to be so expensive, maybe this is worth a try. As for myself, I'm sticking to the pricier fare when I do opt for a strong oud fragrance. That said, I guess I do have a few cheapies, but yeah, you know, this one isn't bad. I might consider keeping this one. But yeah, ultimately I'm getting rid of at least these two. You know, one of my most successful childhood friends became the CEO or equivalent of a, a very big chocolate company. She's retired now, lucky woman. And I remember her always saying, life is too short for bad chocolate. I think that applies here. Rather than, for example, Perpetual Oud, if I want a Rose Oud done right, I'll probably pull this baby out. More on her in a later video. Dior's Oud Isfahan is stunning. It also gets the most compliments from strangers when I wear it, and I live in Japan, 
where strangers tend not to banter so much with one another. When I pulled this Dior off the shelf, I got to thinking about the other Oud Forward fragrances I currently have, and I do have a few. For example, I have this Honey Oud, which was gifted to me by an Iranian perfumer friend I studied with in Dubai. It's not too shabby, although this is probably synthetic too. I have a wee Black Oud from Montal. Now this is a fragrance I would never wear. It's hardcore medicinal oud and far too skanky and also synthetic, I think. But oddly, I do like to sniff this once in a while. Kind of weird, I know. Do you keep fragrances like that that you like to smell but never wear? I have a bunch of oud heavy decants also in my um, wee perfume suitcase, but perhaps I'll pull those out in a later video. Nothing as classy as this beautiful creature though. So yeah, I've been pretty hard on these poor fragrances, these Udi fragrances from Zara. I've mentioned this before, but one thing I would like to compliment the brand on is the fact that, you know, Zara is at least willing to push the envelope a bit when it comes to scent profiles. I don't think designer houses would be ready to do that somehow. Niche and indie houses, sure, uh, they aim at more segmented markets. But mainstream perfume houses, you know, they just rinse and repeat flankers of the stuff they know sells best to the mainstream. So good on Zara for blurring the lines and introducing a wide audience to more alternative smells. For many, oud is by nature a very polarizing ingredient, or a note I should say in this case, and very hard to do well in the best of situations, or you know, an audience outside the Middle East anyway. So bravo Zara! Now, luckily, my upcoming Zara fragrance reviews will have more favorable opinions from yours truly, I think, anyway. Uh, I'll smell you later, my lovelies. Saint Gourmand, signing out. Bye-bye.